market backlog, the significant rise in the value of electronic transactions in the first three months of this year uh, relative to the corresponding period of last year uh, uh, showed a whole lot of um, the differences now. The CBN's initiative to redesign the Naira bills and reduce the amount of physical currency in circulation also affected it. With respect to other payments channels, the mobile inter-scheme channel delivered the fastest 209% year-on-year to 4.1 trillion Naira. However, in terms of absolute value, it fell significantly behind the value of NIP's transactions. Well, joining me right now is Victoria Ekanem, a business leader with experience in accelerating profitable growth for businesses. She is a senior executive in a fintech company overseeing daily business operations, business performance and growth, senior team and cross-departmental the goal alignment, ensuring execution and implementation of strategies and investors' management amongst other functions. Right now, she is the head of business operations at Strength Up or Traction Apps Limited Many thanks for joining me, Victoria, Thank on Business Insights. Mm, a whole lot seems to be happening with the digital economy. Uh, impressive figures we've seen. E-payment increasing to 48.3 in March. Uh, first of all, what's your first thought about that? I mean, when I think about the rise in e-payment value, um, remember that in Q1 of 2023 was when the um, cashless policy went into you know, went into, um, it, we, we enacted Sorry, the yeah. cashless policy, right? So that cashless policy is the main reason why, mm. you know, would have a spike. I mean, you probably ask mm. how, you know, what are okay. the reasons why. I mean, you have the banked um, population in Nigeria, and these people are familiar with, you know, e like electronic um, payment um, solutions mm. and tools. Mm. So when you take cash out, it means these people are forced to use these solutions and these tools that they have available to them. Yeah. However, the unbanked yeah. um, population, I mean, the World Bank um, statistic says that we have about 36.8% adults unbanked in Nigeria. That was at 2027, yeah. at 17. However, at 2021, you know, a study says that we have 42 million unbanked oh, adults. That's really high. That's high. So imagine taking cash away from 42 million mm. Nigerian adults mm. and forcing them. I mean, these unbanked people will now have to, they don't have access to bank mm -hmm. accounts. They'll have to open bank accounts, you know, not necessarily bank accounts. Some of them will use solutions you know, made available to them by mm. fintech companies that we yeah. have out there today, mm. you know, it gives them these same tools. So they'll have to put this together. They're forced to make use of their ATM cards and other e-payment solutions. Mm. And that all together, you know, would just cause the spike mm. in e-payment, right? This doesn't mean, let me put this out there. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, there's increase in, um, you know, the earning power of the citizens. Okay. I mean, considering the cost of living, you know, increase, sure. yeah. right? But it means that when you have people, you know, make use of these tools available to them, it causes, this is the cost for the, you All know, right. the spike. All right, Victoria, uh, you would also agree with me that in the first quarter, Q1 2023, uh, it actually uh, exposed the banks and some of the issues they had because we had lots of um, failed transactions. And uh, many Nigerians had to resort to other payment solutions and some fintechs were actually uh, becoming very popular during that period because uh, if you tried doing uh, the USSD, sometimes it failed. You don't even get... Um, uh, for settlement, right, yes, right. and of course you tried um, the the ATM card. Sometimes they also fail, but most people were now doing uh, some other forms. I don't understand mentioning brands and all of that. So, what does that really tell you? So it tells me that there's a there's an opportunity for the the, the players in this in this field in this sector. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity for us to get better. There's an opportunity for us to invent and innovate, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when the cash cash was policy went into, into play, we saw that people had to resort, a lot more had to resort to using the mobile payment method, yes. right? And I mean, you know, the mobile uh, payment guys were yeah. funny at the time, mm. you know, in, increasing, you know, the, 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 their fee. Their fees, that, yes. that you, that they, I mean, that's, put all that together, mm. you know, you go to the mobile guy, you want to take out 20K and he's telling you you have to give him 25 you know, he has to take out 25K. That spirals down to, mm. to increasing the cost of living. A market woman goes to take money from him and she would need to spread the amount that she's lost to how much she sells her product. 
it increases um, food price, it increases the, the cost of transportation, etc., etc. So it means that there's an opportunity for us to do better. You know, the, the telcos come into play here also. It's an opportunity for them, you know, to... The reasons why the, 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 the transactions will fail are a number of reasons. The telcos, like I said, and also the, 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 the tech companies themselves, you know, we, we, we're talking about NIBS, ETC, and mm. all the players in this field. There's an opportun opportunity for everyone mm. to put all hands on there, get better, innovate, invent, and get solutions out there that are fast. The developed countries have gone way ahead of us, yes, they are. right? And we need to catch up. We uh, really need to catch and up. And so we do. And interestingly, now the policy uh, would uh, be back again, as in with uh, the mopping up of um, this, um, the old as it is, uh, by December 31st. Uh, Nigerians are expecting a, a similar uh, development that happened in the first Absolutely. quarter. Absolutely. So what do you really think? Um, look, there are opportunities there. Okay, and no right? threats. There are threats. <laughs> <laughs> there are threats. Yes. I'll start with the opportunities. All right, go all right? Ahead. Yeah. So the opportunities are, I mean, who, who will benefit from a cashless policy in a nation? Mm. I mean, first, the, the, the financial institutions would definitely benefit. Mm. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier that, you know, you have um, those that are the banked and the unbanked. Mm. If you have everyone creating accounts, it means new accounts, new customers for the banks, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when I say financial institutions, I mean, you know, the DMBs, the okay, Dem the Deposit Money Banks, banks yeah. and the FinTechs, mm. right? So you have new customers for them, right? You also have a situation where the, the new customers come in through the funnel, mm. and that, gener that goes, it trickles down, down into, you know, them having more active customers. Mm. And when you have more active customers, it means that you, the, 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 the TPV, mm. right, the volume mm. increases. Yes, you you have more yeah. customers doing a lot more, uh, you, you know, e-transactions, um, transactions, transactions, and the volume yeah. increases. And that means more profit okay. for them. And if, I mean, if, the, if the, the, the financial institutions are making more money, it's good news for the shareholders. Mm. It's good news for the, 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 the investors, people that are looking to invest or mm. people that have already, you know, invested, right? So that is for the the um the financial inst institutions mm. you also have business owners you know a cashless policy also enables the business owners to have um seamless to accept payments seamlessly mm. the fintechs have come in with solutions they've come in to make it simple and easy for mm. these um, businesses to access yeah. Um, all these tools, yes. right? I mean, the banks have them, but it's not as easy, True. right, to access. And there are rules that the banks have put in place that they're not willing to wiggle around. Mm. You know, the fintechs are not wiggling around, but they're giving them opportunity to access this tool. So right. it's opportunity for the business owners to, you know, monitor their, their payments in the businesses and less theft. You know, when you don't have cash moving around, mm. there's less theft. Right, there's also the telcos. You know, when the telcos, when, when there's you're doing more e payment, e transactions, you're receiving alerts. Yes, you know, the telcos are making their fee, yeah, right? Yeah. And they also power the telcos, also power you know, these tools that we use for in as much as we have uh, issues uh, right now. I was going to talk about challenges right now because right, right now there are issues between the banks and the telcos mm -hmm. over USSB uh, uh, debt and all of that, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, that. That is, as long as there's money in play, mm. that topic will still be out there, okay. you know. But, I mean, it's easy for us to, you know, navigate around it mm. and all of that. I mean, pushing forward to, um, the, the telcos also still have an opportunity to, you know, the telcos power the, the tools that are used for e-payment. Yes, they do. It's an opportunity for them to get, get it right. Oh. I mean, there's so much money out there. Mm. I haven't mentioned the threats. Okay, very, very you, quickly. Yeah. Very quickly, if yeah. you had the threat, the, the threats are cyber security. I'm just going to. Uh -huh. so you, we need to be secure. We need to innovate and invent around cyber security mm. because it's another people, you know, identity theft, etc., etc. That is going to be on the spike. Okay. Right. All right. So as before we go now, I just need to get one more question in to just wrap up. Now, we talked about um, how uh, we have so much unbanked, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, public uh, in Nigeria. How do we begin to address that? Uh, where do the fintechs um, come in? So, you know, earlier that we had introduced um, the mobile payment um, mm. method, right? And I think this mobile 
you know, money method is an opportunity for us to, for the fintechs, mm. you know, to get into those communities that are unbanked. Okay. Right, because it's just easy for an individual to go out there with the you know the the, the tools yeah. required, and you know just sign people up, you know get you get get them you know accounts that yeah. they need, get them the tools, and get them up to speed. All right. And you know financial inclusion is very much on its way in All the right. country. All right, I must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Victoria Ikanam. I uh, wish we had more time to talk because uh, this particular industry is very big and, of course, the opportunities are, are really massive. But then again, thank you so much for the useful insight that you, you have brought to the show today. We do thank appreciate you. it. All right, uh, that's the size of the show for today. Uh, Business Insights uh, will return again on Monday. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. See you again next time. Bye for now.